liquidity effectively goes reaching nearly one receiver, but still less than five receiver. And uh, the present result, uh, in fact, consistent with other um, uh, published data, such as the duplicate portion studies done by Kyoto University, or the Kua Fukushima, or the uh, Fukushima Prefecture. But uh, we believe that food screening and whole body counter test must be carried out continuously as the, the soil is really contaminated, so if they, they eat freely everything they can the harvest, then that would lead to high level of contamination. And our paper is, in fact, the second paper reporting the whole body counter results published in the Red Meat English Language Journal. And the first one was, was written by Sogras, I think, here. I was uh, reporting the uh, Minamisoa result until the March 2011. And that was uh, published in the Journal of Metro, American Medical Association uh, last year. And our paper, this paper, uh, the result of this paper will be, will be included in the uh, United Nations Science Committee report, uh, which is due this summer. So thank you very much. What are the changes in the abortion rate statistics in uh, Fukushima after 3.11? Maybe this is a question to the doctor. And um, what do you advise to the women who in Fukushima who want to make an abortion because they are worried about birth defect because of uh, radiation? say to the pregnant women that the exposure level in Fukushima now is relatively low. So if you uh, if you take care take much care about the food they eat, you eat, uh, you do not uh, have much worry about the pre pregnancy. Usually I think so. Uh, OBGYN uh, situation published uh, some research in Japanese, maybe, but uh, the, the work was done by the National Prefecture Government and the Medical School, so we are not ready to do that. So. Okay, next question I've got to tell you. Uh, please, I need to pay out the source first, and uh, no speech, please, and please come forward uh, for questions. Uh, next question. Stalpers, Netherlands Press, Reading Arts and Health View. I probably also have a question for the medical doctor. <laughs> uh, a general question to, to you as well. From the beginning, uh, uh, Professor, um, from the beginning, it was clear that the uh, people most as at risk are the people uh, working on the campus of the Fukushima Institute. Uh, and uh, do you have a chance uh, to work there? Because there is really a, a big, um, there are big worries. That's one question uh, which you may uh, answer. The other Short question, answer is no. Short answer is no. <laughs> That's a pity. Uh, the second question is, um, I have uh, had a chance to have an interview with uh, Matsumoto Shicho. He's a medical doctor who has worked in, in the Chernobyl area. 
um, he was also not worried about the immediate internal contamination, but there are side effects of being exposed to radioactivity, internal radioactivity, which will not cause cancer probably, but will could cause other kinds of sicknesses. Uh, is there any research being done uh, in Arizona? Or, uh, so it's maybe not directly uh, deal with cancer, which we do not know at this stage, but others. Because of a weak, a weak resistance, that's the general uh, explanation. Yes. Uh, so, because we know uh, we should profound research regarding the uh, disease other than the cancer, such as the cardiovascular disease in the swabs. So, uh, now we are performing research, uh, the research regarding the number of uh, swabs uh, developed after the Kishimadachi uh, department disaster. Uh, the swabs, cerebral vascular disease. And uh, we are now performing, so uh, we don't have the result now. Uh, but the problem is a database. Uh, our our research is were done by the private hospitals, and uh, in Minamisoma, uh, we perform the screening programs as a health checkups, not as a research, just a health checkups. And uh, our screening program was uh, funded by the local government. Local government, not the central government or not the prefectural government. And uh, we do not have the database of the diseases in Namsoma. So uh, to calculate the accurate number of diseases developed after the disaster, we should make the database from now. Okay, uh, next question. Please uh, keep in mind that the, the area that the doctors uh, measured uh, radiation was actually not one of the most heavily you know, heavily contaminated area. You can see it in the back, it's in Miharu and the Data Central Hospital. So there are other areas which is much more heavily contaminated, such as Iade and Utala. So please keep that in mind. Uh, let's see. Uh, any, any more questions? I used to work with uh, the Bangkok Post for 19 years, but last year I came here to conduct a research about the impact of Fukushima. Anyway, my question is, uh, can you give me some idea what uh, the body, the whole body count can measure? I mean, you say CCM or whatever, but I want to know whether it's grammar ray beta ray, alpha ray, alpha rays, because it's very crucial. If you just generally, because we are stupid people, so we don't know about the, de the detail about that. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I think the Miharu, um, if I'm not wrong, I, s I spent six months in Fukushima, okay. Uh, I think they give, they prescribe the IODN on March, not 14 or 15, the uh, the mayor prescribed, so it's different from another town. And so, so what can you give me? Maybe somebody else already know. What should be the causes that uh, three young people in Fukushima uh, found to be uh, to have uh, thyroid cancer. Okay, so, uh, right. The, uh, let me answer the first question. The whole body count can only measure the radioactive nuclei in the body, which emits gamma rays. So, uh, cannot, for instance, measure the, the uh, strontium ninety or plutonium or whatever, which in, which is an But uh, what makes the uh, actually quite different, quite different from a general brain accident is that the ratio of cesium to strontium to plutonium is, uh, is, uh, is very, very small. I mean, the, the cesium to strontium, at, at least on, on, this, on the land, not, I'm not talking about the, the, the seawater, is about one to one thousandth, that's 0.1%. 
and from uh, between the uh, uh, cesium to plutonium is about one millionth. So uh, th th that's, there's a consistent throughout uh, from sample to sample, uh, from uh, soil sample and other samples. And it is quite lucky that we, we can uh, uh, assess the effect, health effect of people of uh, internal contamination of people by only by measuring the cesium. And we do not need to worry too much about the CPU, the sponsorship, and plutonium. Um, uh, that's quite, quite, quite lucky. And so our uh, 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 dose, the internal uh, uh, exposure due to potassium-40, which is mainly uh, uh, beta, beta ray, is in fact much, much larger than the cesium, and, and of course, from uh, uh, larger than strontium, and also the, uh, the Japanese people uh, uh, every year eat uh, 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 polonium 210, which is an alpha emitter, and, uh, and the annual exposure due to polonium 210, which is abundant in the seafood, uh, contributes about 0 .800, uh, 800 micro 0.8 micro and so that compared to that, the uh, whatever uh, plutonium or uranium and so on, which may be suppressed amount of that uh, in, uh, in highly contaminated area, we don't need to worry about that. That's the answer. The other, the, the second question, Cyborg. Okay, so we don't know. Uh, of course, our, our paper has nothing to do with the thyroid uh, cancer. Uh, we measured, start measuring. Uh, uh, four, five, uh, the, 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 the uh, seven, nearly half, half a year after the accident. The, the uh, iodine-131 has a half-life of, of only eight days. And so that uh, we may be not in the best, uh, we, we are not the best person to answer the, the questions you, you have. But I have been doing some research uh, <coughs> that's, uh, uh, that will be published Early next month, at, uh, uh, in that is that has some connection to the thyroid uh, problem. That is, the government has uh, uh, published the estimation of uh, of the, uh, the thyroid uh, um, uh, equivalent dose MAC contour using the so-called speedy uh, simulation. And the question is, how many people actually were in, in that area when the, the, the emission of uh, iodine-131 was, was the highest? That was in, on March 15th. And I recently noted that we can, we can use the, the, the GPS data from, uh, from mobile phones, which were automatically collected and asked. The logging such, of such data still exists in, 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 in the more remote countries, and I have used such data to reconstruct the wear of the people uh, during the accident, and that will be published next month. What about the dose of uh, iodine? Is that does it have any effect on the seizure uh, uh, no. of internal exposure? No. Okay. Uh, quite unrelated. Our research shows that chronic internal radiation exposure is low in most regions in Fukushima. You know, the detection rate of cesium in children is now 0.1%. Uh, the result is consistent with that in uh, Minami Soma or in other places in Fukushima prefecture now. That means the chronic exposure from contaminated food sustained very low level due to the strict food control. So maybe the uh, food control uh, in Fukushima now is maybe successful because the uh, chronic, chronic detection rate is low. But that doesn't mean the acute stage of exposure is not or not is low. That doesn't mean the acute stage of exposure is low. But, but uh, in some researches, uh, some researchers show the exposure level of, uh, from iodine, uh, in, in that they were common down bridges and uh, that 
that was not uh, that was not so hard uh, compared to that in the China model, but we didn't do some research by us. We didn't research research so we didn't know much about it. But uh, so our research shows that total exposure, the, sorry, the main exposure is from the acute exposure right after the disaster. So the we, well, from now on, uh, we have to concentrate on the uh, measurement or estimation of the acute exposure levels by using the uh, environmental monitoring data or some, some data we can get now. And, uh, and we have to do the continuous health checkups. Uh, so the, uh, as a doctor, we didn't know, we didn't say anything about the number of three. Three is high or low, I, I don't know. But uh, we have to do the continuous health checkups from now on. That we have to do from what? What? That we have to do now. Yes. Uh, well, this uh, uh, table here, which is not from our, uh, this is quoted in our paper, but the data come from Kusma Prefecture, uh, has two columns, one here and one here. And uh, so this is the first one, is this acute phase, that is until January 31st of last year. And, uh, and uh, this is uh, 25, which is above one millisievert were, were in this uh, acute phase. So there were people who were exposed to, uh, to this radio who see food, and uh, presumably they inhaled uh, CGU in uh, March. Of March 2011. But after uh, February last year, the, the Fukushima Prefecture and uh, government agencies, IFJ and EA, changed the model from uh, acute to chronic. That's the ingestion, uh, the eating regularly and eating food. And in this statistics, only one exceeded the one exceeded the threshold. So, as uh, Dr. Stoker said, there were, in, in fact, people are inhaled from presumably the radioactive decision which gas in the in March, uh, which accounts for this. And this includes the people from Inkate and the Kawabata and other highly contaminated area, which the government, uh, uh, JNEA, for instance, at the uh, National Institute for Radiation uh, Studies, uh, uh, Gave uh, priorities for the for the screening in the first phase, and so this is this separates the the acute and chronic. Oh, this is the sum. No, so you add these and then then this. Is. So the, I subdivided this into the first acute acute phase and chronic. I'm a Sash and I'm a documentary filmmaker and a member of the club. Um, so your research, and through your research and through your tweeting, you have raised awareness with people and so maybe they're being more careful about uh, foods that they're eating or, or ways of uh, ingesting uh, cesium. But uh, the data that you have uh, is from you know six months after and I think um, this woman also raised the point that, you know, would, would there be, could there be health effects from being exposed to uh, the cesium, even if now it's decreasing, or even if now the levels are low, we don't have data for the days or weeks after uh, the explosion, particularly for people that are not in these lower areas, but like you said, Udate, Itate, Kalamata. So I'm curious about uh, how you feel about your data being used or being willfully interpreted by some media organizations to say, look, uh, all of Fukushima is safe. These guys are saying, uh, look, it's, it's very low now and everything is fine. So how, how do you feel about the research being used in that way? Okay, so um, 
this um, uh, it, it is true that, that our, as the uh, Dr. Spoker have already said, our data show, and what we are uh, emphasizing in our paper, that, that this is in a chronic phase. I mean, so we are, people are not right now eating contaminated food. That's a message. And uh, we are, in this paper, we didn't uh, uh, analyze, and we, we cannot analyze the, what they the, uh, level of contamination early in the, in the accident, but this is seizure. So that uh, uh, even after a few months, <coughs> the year, since the year, uh, the biological heart life is about 100 days, at least for adults, we can still measure the effect of uh, seizure inhalation from the accident. So the part part of our data can be used to, uh, to uh, estimate the, uh, the level of cesium, uh, and we, we uh, sort of extrapolate back to March uh, 2011 to estimate the initial intake amount. And that was in fact done by Tsvokra, uh, Dr. Tsvokra in, in his first paper that was published in JAMA. The, uh, that analyzed the, uh, the, the dynamics of the people from September 2011 to, uh, to March 2012. And, they, and he, in fact, used the, the model, which is acute model, to, uh, to estimate the level of oxygen of the inoxidant people. Yes. Uh, I you know, the, we can excrete the tissue by rain and, uh, of the, with the biological half-life of about four months. So the, uh, in September 2011, we measured uh, 300 children in Namisoma, and uh, after that, uh, we performed uh, about 10,000 measurements within a year. Within a year. So, uh, by using this data, we can estimate the acute rever acute exposure levels right after the disaster, because the uh, half life is four months. So, the, if the blood level exposure in September is here, maybe four months before here four months before here. So we can calculate the acute exposure level by using this data. And by these calculations, we, our studies show that the acute stage of exposure is relatively low. Uh, in most residents, uh, all but one resident below one receiver in Minamisol. But the problem is that uh, we published uh, two papers regarding internal radiation exposures, and uh, within a year uh, after the disaster, in Japan, the number of examinations performed was 50,000. 50,000 examinations were performed within a year. And we, in Minami Sono, we performed 15,000. In the private hospital, uh, in Hinata Hospital, which is a private hospital, uh, they performed uh, 20. Thousand measurement within a year, and the rest was performed by the government. And we, unfortunately, we did not have the, the detailed information of these results because uh, the central government did not publish the detailed data of the internalization exposures. So I think that's the problem. But by using our data, uh, the acute stage of exposure is. Still <laughs> wrong, but which is based on the just estimation. Do you think our Minamisoma and Yuraka village can represent? the whole Fukushima, and uh, can you, do you think that this writing at very moment can guarantee the future of people in Fukushima, whether, you know, they would not get any uh, health risks, because in Chernobyl, I don't think that the symptom show within two or three, I think after three years, uh, if I'm not wrong, when I read those papers. Okay, um, uh, the uh, Minamisoma 
hostel and the hierarchical hostel uh, have different properties. Minamisono hostel is a city hostel, so it is primarily for, for the citizen of Minamisono city. Hirata hostel is a private hostel and it has, uh, in fact, the data from all over Fushu. Okay, so the people who uh, are anxious to have their bodies scanned but can, cannot wait for the uh, prefect, prefectural government's turns. So, so they come to here at the hospital. So that, in fact, if you, if you look at this uh, contamination level, which is uh, 100 here, and we have town is somewhere around here. But we also have measurements from uh, for people living in a much higher contaminated region and, and even higher uh, than, than this. And these come from Itate village and Date and uh, Kawamata and other highly contaminated areas and the people who uh, evacuated from such regions. So then we have a list of, uh, of evacuated people who are now living in Koryama and so on. So uh, our data, the, that I, the data that I, I'm looking at is not just from Miharu town, or not just from uh, from that small region around around uh, uh, here, at, here at the village, but uh, I, in fact I have access I have looked at, we have looked at all the data from, from various parts of Krishna. And part of this is actually published on the web page of the Hospital. That's the, the distribution of, uh, of, of the percentage of uh, CG detection uh, at various parts of Krishna. It is in the, uh, in, in the, on the web page, which I, don't, uh, I, I cannot uh, show to you right now. I have no connection. And, but so, so uh, we know we cannot uh, uh, guarantee that there is nobody uh, who uh, was uh, 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 who uh, inhaled or ingested very dangerous level of the seizure because our measurement is not exhaustive. But uh, by looking at the, uh, the distribution of uh, uh, sampled from uh, from various places in Fushima and at very little of soil contamination, uh, we, we can say that the people's internal contamination is really low. It, it is, I would say, it's a factor about a hundred more than in Chernobyl. Uh, that's the, the difference between what's estimated from the soil contamination level to the uh, the actual uh, amount of seed being given. People's body goes about a factor of 100. We perform the this screen program as a health checkups. So the uh, you know the average level of internal exposure is low, but the, uh, Dr. Hayada shows that someone shows a high level, highest level of exposures from uh, eating the contaminated food. So the you know in other health checkups uh, treating patients with diabetes. Maybe 90% were healthy, or healthy, but 10% um, diabetic, and someone should admit to the hospital soon after that. And uh, that's that's the same in internal radiation exposure programs. From now on, we have to find out the high level of the people who continue to eat high level of uh, contaminated, contaminated food. And uh, what we have to do is uh, to make ways to find out effectively people who continue to eat con uh, contaminated food. And uh, education is a key issue, I think. Okay, um, we have until 1.30 and it's 129, so let's make this the last question. Right, Dennis Nerma of Science Magazine. You've concentrated on internal exposure. If you consider external exposure, how would that affect the, the, your conclusions or the, the picture of what the risk is to the residents of Fukushima? Since you asked this question, I, let me show you one slide that I prepared for other occasions. ICRP meeting in the city. And um, so 